Hi everybody, welcome to the Obscure Toy Files. I am still your host, Boggs, and now we're going to look at some other cool stuff. Not quite as obscure, but not quite, you know, it's, it's unlicensed, because it originally came from the place, people who made it. We've got some G.I. Joe Vintage Vehicle Goodness, which is amazing to do. Uh, we have a couple of things in this series. Uh, today we're looking at the Arctic Blast with Windchill. The Arctic Blast came out in 19... 90? 88, 89. So I'm probably not getting 89. Um, and I've liked this vehicle for a long time. I never had an opportunity to get it. But it was on eBay not too long ago um, for a very good price. Um, especially with the rate. Especially the way the G.I. Joe stuff has taken off in the last couple of years. I mean, you're going back to like 2021 and the stuff was very expensive. Let alone like... I, and... I'm one of those weirdo collectors who enjoys buying vintage toys and opening them up. Why? You know what it is? Because I see it as this toy's in this box. That Joe's sitting right there, windshield. His O-ring could be shot. I can take him out of this bubble and he can just fall on the floor and be a bunch of parts. Because these things are made of plastic and rubber and metal and they are literally deteriorating every single day. So I say, why not open them up, document it here on my YouTube channel, The Obscure Toy Files, and share it with everybody. So now everybody gets to experience what it's like to open up an Arctic Blast, and maybe it'll be a way for people to go, you know what, I don't have to buy one new and open it up. Or, you know what, maybe I want to do that. It might be a fun experience. Because life, people, is about experiences. It's about experiencing different things, t trying new food, trying new uh, movies, games, toys, in this case, G.I. Joe vehicles. Because I am a huge fan of the 3.75 inch O-ring Joes from 1982 through 1984. There's great toys amongst all the years. There's some cool ones in 82 and 83, which I never liked growing up because I was more into 87 through 90. So this thing, why well, I didn't see, don't remember seeing any of my pamphlets that I had. I definitely, you know, I've seen it since then. It's pretty cool. So we're going to take a look at the box because we have the opportunity to have one in the package. There's some price stickers on here, but they've come off. So somebody might have given this to somebody as a gift or something. But it's the G.I. Joe Real American Hero Arctic Blast from Hasbro in 1988-89. It includes Arctic Blast Driver Windchill with Swivel Arm Battle Grip. Other figures sold separately. It is fiber and up, see back panel for content. Some assembly required, no tools necessary. Bottom of the box, you just see uh, the artwork again, which we can zoom in on. You can see Windchill driving this thing. Machine guns blazing, crazy missiles firing. And then Scoop, and I think that's Stalker, uh, banning these guns on the side. So it's like a crazy ski go-kart with giant spiked wheels. My friend uh, Dave had it, and it was fun to play with. Um, so this is a better picture, a bigger picture. There's Windchill with an awesome mustache. Looks like Chuck Norris. Uh, sides of the box, same thing, but with the date. Same on this side. Back of the box is where all the fun stuff is. And it says, Arctic Blast in the frozen wastelands of northern Alaska. G.I. Joe Arctic Blast patrols the icy defense perimeters in search of Cobra infiltrators. Da -da -da -da. Worth three flag points, which I did use. I did, I did mail away, from, I did, I mailed away for a Cobra ATAC that came with a fire bat. And I remember waiting, I remember it came in the mail when I was coming home from vacation with my family. And I was like, oh my God, it's here. So it was so cool to do that. Uh, the features of the Arctic Blast include, and of course this picture on the back is uh, typically a prototype. Because at the time the box was taken photographs for the original production toy wasn't ready. Because they got to do all this stuff in advance. Which is why the packaging says 1988 even though it came out in 89. Because everything's printed in advance. So features on the Arctic Blast. We have <clears throat> two positionable rear mounted guns. We have a light bar on the back. Uh, super realistic retail. Or detail, not retail. <laughs> super realistic retail value. Nice. Uh, room for two additional figures, which is always good. Actual size shown. We will test this, Hasbro. Uh, free rolling studded tires. Dual front mounted rotating Gatling guns. Sturdy construction for rugged play. Two surface to surface missiles. That means that they get shot from the vehicle to other vehicles on the ground and they cannot shoot up into the air. For those of you who are not aware. Important. Enclosed are top secret blueprints on an actual <laughs> Arctic blast. And add them to your G.I. Joe command files. That's an order because it's an exclamation point. Contains chassis, roll bar frame, two wheel hubs, two studded tires, two frame guns, two Gatling guns, two missiles, solar-sensitive laser gun, I don't know what that is, one pair of all-terrain skis, 
seat belt, windshield figure, G.I. Joe folder, label sheet, instructions, and blueprints. The name Jim Steele does not identify any known living person. Well, that's the other cool thing. His accessories, <laughs> you're going to love this. They are, I think it's turned the light on, you can see. I mean, his windshield chilling out. First of all, his one weapon is his amazing mustache. Look at this guy. The sculpting of these things is always great. All that detail in such a small package. But he, <laughs> he has skis with guns on them. Like that little gun you see, that's attached to the ski. He comes with a gun, and because you can see the, you know, the handle down there. But he has skis with guns on them. I'm, I'm, I'm down. This guy wouldn't really likes to rock. He likes to party, and I'm down with it. Uh, so let's see. Read the file card off, because why not? We have access to it. Codename Windchill, Arctic Blast Driver. File name Steel, Jim SN, 31260 uh, 0386. Primary military specialty, Arctic Blast Driver. Secondary military specialty, Cold Weather Survival Instructor. Birthplace, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Grade E6. <clears throat> Windchill was an avid ski mobiler and hunter until he discovered the biathlon. An Olympic event that combines cross-country skiing and target shooting. It seemed like the ultimate sport for him, and he might have qualified for a spot on the American team if he had not talked with Blizzard at the National Elimination Tournament somehow. Go oh, tournament. Period. Somehow the idea of getting paid to drive fast, heavily armed snow vehicles is more appealing than winning medals. And a quote from some commanding officer at G.I. Joe says, Driving any sort of high-speed vehicle on snow and ice takes a lot more than maintaining the controls. The driver must be able to quickly spot immovable objects buried underneath loose powder, thin ice, or the way the wind can find a crevice, fill a crevasse with soft snow. Windshield can read nature's elements like a book, and that gives him the edge he needs to win in a winter battle. Oh, yeah. So now, check all that cool stuff out. Boom. Let's... Get him out of the box and check it out because why not? Um, now these ones are glued, so if you can see from here, I can do back a smidgen. It's a good one. Boom, boom. Uh, we can do. I got. So I got a quick one. Ah, you can smell the 1980s. Reaganomics. Oh, this is okay. This is all right. Okay, I try to do this way. Okay. <laughs> This is on a tray. You just slide that puppy out. Wink. Poop. Then we got our Arctic Blast box. Go back there. Actually, I'm going to move this off to the side just because i got to get some more camera space. Did I drop anything? Nothing? Okay, cool. So we got his outlooks. So when I'm putting this back in the box later, I'll know. Uh, this might be one of those one time assembly jobs because I think once those wheels pop on, it ain't coming off again. So. And here is Windchill on his blister bubble. Still attached to... Oof. Oof. That's the glue coming undone. I don't think his bubble's going to come out. I think he's just going to... You see that glue just, just rotting away? This is what I'm telling people. Like, these things are rotting away. People, people who are holding on to these for another 20 years, I got news for you. You're not going to have anything to hold on to. You know, look at that. The glue just went... <laughs> I got off to just like re adhere it and put it back in the, in the box and stuff like that. It comes this gun. It's a cool looking rifle. A nice stock on it. This cool scope. And wind chill. I've got him. O rings a little loose. I gotta get some new O rings in my kit, which I didn't bring with me because I'm a moron. I just have to flash. Is it better without the flash? You can get some good detail on this face. Zoom in this midge. Smidge? Zoom in a smidge? Smidge zoom in? No? That's what we're doing? Okay. That's as far as you're going to go? No? Alright, I'll use the flash. I, gotta, I, would, I put it on one. Boop. Boop. There we go. That's better? There we go. That's better. All right, there you go. Now you can see his face. My name is Windchill. I'm here to eat cocoa and not mess around. Look at this mustache. This soup strainer isn't, isn't screwing around for nobody's business. America. And also ski mobiles. So, Windchill here is rocking some cool outfit. Uh, he's got a pistol and a holster on his, on his right by his fun time land. He's got, it looks like he's got something up here. I don't know what it is. It might be a knife, but not really. Uh, back, he's got a little belt strap. He's got cool little pants. Like he's a rider. He's got spurs on the back. Is he a cowboy? This guy looks like he's dressed to go riding a horse. He's got a knife in his boot. You know, cool articulation. Usual articulation points on any G.I. Joe. 
Fresh out of the card. 30-something years old. Good stuff. Oh, there you go. We got the knee pop. Oh, that's the sound of a Chewy I jump went joint room for the first time. Brand new screws. Very cool. And he's like, I'm ready to go F around. And then here his his gun skis. These things are so cool. Like it's such a fun idea. It's, it's, it's fun toy stuff, you know. It doesn't make does it make any logical sense? Of course not, but it's shared your stuff. Don't don't knock it till you tried it, man. Listen. You're riding around on skis with machine guns on them. Does it make again in the world of toys, like I make a role playing game called the Secret World of Toy Box, yeah. And in that world, toys come to life, and you can play them in a role playing game similar to the Dragons, except you're doing like uh, you're doing like adventures with toys going around instead of uh, what do you call it, like for hunting for gold with monsters and stuff like that in Dungeons and Dragons techniques. <laughs> What's that? It's like pizza ladder, pizza ladder. <laughs> tuck in, quick, tuck in. <laughs> yeah, they made skis a bunch of times to different characters. Like Blizzard had skis. He was a cool looking figure too. I wanted to get him on card, but he's expensive. So that didn't happen. It's always good when they can hold their weapons properly. <laughs> There's there are the cobras now. Hit the, hit the slopes, kids. It's like better off dead with John Cusack. <laughs> two dollars. I got your two dollars right here, kid. Right, so we'll put wind chill over there, so you can chill out where we can't see him. There you go. And then we'll look at the stuff that came in the box. Now everything comes in one big bag, so you can see here. This is a big bag. Everything's sealed in this bag. And these tires have been like beating up the plastic all these years. You see the little pivots in it. Here's the chassis with everything else. And it just nicely just slides into this tray. So if you want to put it away, oh, I could be the next Joe, me. You could be a real American hero. Get a G.I. Joe action figure of you plus your own personalized file card. Hot diggity damn. Yeah, I did this uh, with, the, with the last one they did, which was gold and dark green. And I made that. His name was Eels. And uh, even though he has no aquatic equipment, so it was pretty funny. I'm like, that's like the worst person to be named Eels. Ooh, that's a wonderful sound. So now this thing is, this thing was sealed. This is still sealed in the baggie. But not for long. Mitten box collectors are like, why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? Because I'm a villain, pure and simple. No, it's that this stuff isn't going to last forever. Guys, you got to check it out while you can. Pamphlets! Best part about Joe's things. Operation Deep Six. These are the little booklets you can order all sorts of other stuff with. Do, 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 do. Special Mission Dot Driver Set. You get Steeler, Ace, Admiral. Admiral? His name is just Admiral? Lamprey's Strato Viper, Motor Viper? I don't remember somebody named Admiral. I have to look that up. How did I miss him? Super Trooper? What? Fun fact, Super Trooper has the exact same head as Knockdown from uh, Battle Force 2000. Yep. So, they have the exact same noggin. So, I'm prob I probably... I might really get Super Trooper just because he's like a Captain America kind of guy. I should turn the flash off so it's not so shiny. And we got some other older vehicles. So, we got um, Hardball, I think his name is. Uh... Uh, Max uh, Spearhead, I think his name was Max, was his Bobcat Hydro Viper, uh, a Cobra Vamp, a Desert Vamp. Oh, here you go, Spiffy Spiffy. There you go, the other side. Oh, more stuff. Whoa, ho, ho. The Skyhawk for only three dollars and fifty cents plus one flag point. Not too bad. And then you got a bunch of these older, older Joe things. I have, my cousin Johnny got into Joe Joe in 82, and he got out of it in, like, 86 and gave everything to me. So I have these pieces. I have, like, maybe like that part, a couple of things. I have this, or at least have, like, parts of it. It was cool, but it's more military-based stuff. Uh, at this point, you know, they were just reusing things they already had. Because you see, like, these all, all these figures, like, from 88, like, this Dr. Grenader, you know, uh, I don't know who that, who that guy is. <clears throat> Hit and run, shockwave. Hardball again. Shows all the different stuff and all the points it costs. 
Pretty cool stuff. That's one of the GH you know, was a great line, man. Not gonna, not gonna lie. It was a lot of fun. Nothing wrong with it. You know, military or not, you can play with it your own way. And that's no one just that one, really. We have our instructions. And we have the hoo 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 hoo. The big one. The actual pamphlet. With some sticker sheets. Ooh, ooh, boom. This is a good one. I didn't have this one. Uh, I had the one from a year before this. Ooh, 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 checklist time. Let's see. Uh, don't have them. Got them. Don't have them. Don't have them. Don't have them. Don't have them. Had them for some weird reason. I don't know why I had him. Uh, have him still. Had him temporarily. Sold him. Don't have him. Don't have him. Uh, have have him. He's awesome. Don't have him. Don't have him. Don't have him. Have him. Have a couple of them. Don't have him. Have him. Have a Sonic Fighters version of him. That's a lot, that's a lot of guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. This goes the entire way. Uh, let's see. Okay, I have Charm Royal, I have Lightfoot, I don't have Blizzard, I don't have Hardball, or Hit and Run, or Storm Shadow, or Muskrat. I had Spirit and Max as a kid. Mudo I'd like to get, he's pretty cool. Repeater is also neat, but I don't have him. I do not have the Target, I have Voltar, I think. I don't have any Iron Grenaders, and I have some Annihilators, because those are always fun. Um, I found Copperhead, Python Patrol Copperhead, into my backyard one day. So one of my neighbor's kids must have launched it across the fence. Don't have any slaughter, slaughter marauders or tiger force guys. Vehicle wise, I don't have any of these. I had Darklon's Evader at one point, and I sold it. Um, I had that for a while. That wasn't a bad vehicle. But I just didn't. You know, I did, I did, I did, Destro's Iron Grenade Demon was really cool. That was a nice vehicle. Uh, other stuff. I have a Hiss Two. I have a Co Fang Two. The Cobra Bug I have. It's really neat. I don't have those Battlefield robot things. I had a Cobra Condor when I sold it. Uh, it was a cool vehicle. I did an unboxing of it on my Instagram page. I have to transfer that over to Obscure Toy Files. Art Blast we just got. Don't have any of these Battlefield robots. That thing is very big. This thing I got from my friend Dave, and it looks really cool. Fun fact, apparently, this middle piece was supposed to be part of a G.I. Joe train, and when they realized they really couldn't make it work, they kind of just added these extra pieces to it to make it more like a vehicle. Uh, the, the Space Shuttle Complex I got the Crusader Shuttle as a, using the pod from their uh, Raven. The Mud Fighter is apparently not a really good vehicle, uh, even though it looks cool. The G.I. Joe Battle Force 2000 Pulverizer I had, <laughs> it's, a it's just basically a rail, like a laser rail gun on like a popoid, so it's very funny. I had the Night Rhino from the, like, the early 2000s line, so the Warthog is a very fun toy. And I have the... The uh, the Raider, which is also awesome. Another awesome toy, too. So this is like an 88 pamphlet, I guess. Not bad at all. Good stuff. Good stuff, everybody. I like it. Makes it happy. Makes me happy. All right, so let's put this vehicle together before this video gets into the eight-hour mark. So we're going to... I haven't put together a G.I. Joe vehicle in a long time. The last one I put together was... I think the, it's a gravity pod. So we'll, we'll look at the blueprints afterwards. How are we going to assemble this puppy? All right. Step one, wheel assembly. Let's get all this stuff out. we got our guns and missiles. we got our minigun thing attached to the sprue. We'll put the light back on. Boop. Boop. Light. There we go. Miniguns. We'll use a gear system, which is cool. The other cannons. They said this was easier for Hasbro. They just pulled these, these things just pop right out of the molds in the factory and they tossed them in a box. Yeah, let the kids put it together. They, they like putting stuff together. These wheels are kind of rubbery. They got some flex to them. They got a little sheen. Cool spikes. And then we got the big honking wheel covers. I didn't really notice how these assembled when my friend Dave had it. I didn't really look at it that closely. Okay, let's see. First things first. I'll put this over here so we can see it. Right, it doesn't fall over. You good? You good? Okay, cool. So step one. Line up tabs on right wheel with holes in right wheel and press it together as shown. There's different wheels. How do I know which one's right or left? I don't think there is a difference. Why are you lying to me, Hasbro? 
if I was a little kid, I would have crapped my pants right now. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter which wheel it is. I think it's just to pick one. So you got to put this in. You got to line up these little tabs here so they pop into this. I think we're lined up. Okay, let's see. Maybe do a little click. And we're in there. <laughs> That's never coming out again. Well, you could just use a screwdriver and push those back in, but it's not worth it. It's too much of a hassle. Yeah, so I don't think there is an actual right or left wheel. I think it's just them saying, like, pick a wheel that's a little left or left or right. This one's in two. I didn't really click on that one, but we're okay. Yeah, they all look, at the, they all, they all look the same. I'm getting I'm nervous. Like, oh, great, I just fucked it up. I messed it up for everybody. Step two. Snap. Oh. Squeaky. Uh, step two, snap wheels onto posts on body. Now... These are generally one-time assembly. We're going to try. So we'll put it on. And pull back off. Oh, that's on there. So, good, congratulations. This, actually, this might fit in the box. It didn't raise its profile that much. I might still be able to put it in the box, which is good. Well, because that's the problem, too. Sometimes you want to put them away. You know, you don't know where to put it. So then it's like, ah, oh, that stinks. Okay. Step three. Snap. Oh, step three. Pivot light bar... Straight up, put the light bar straight up, and align it with center hole as shown. Okay. Oh, okay. This band. Oh, look how clever they are! It's all one piece, and you just do this. So you get the part loose like this. That's another thing you should know. For those of you who get these loose, and someone goes, "Oh yeah, it was never put together." That's another reason why I'm doing this video. You saw that the entire bag of parts come sealed. So somebody sells you this thing loose and goes, oh, it was never taken out of the box. And it comes in, there's no bag, it was opened. Another way to check is you got to look at these things here and you can see stress marks. See, like when, so when you bend this plastic, it turns white. So if you see it like that, it means somebody, you know, it was put together already once before. Because I had to happen to me on a vehicle. Someone, uh, they like, oh, no, no, it was never been used. And I opened it up and it was used. It was just taken apart and put it back in the box. Um, so, because I, I never saw it before, so I didn't know. So, again, this is part of the reason why I also do these videos, so you guys know what they look like when they're not when they're opened up, so you don't get ripped off by people who are shady. Okay, so pivot light bar straight and align with center holes as shown. Snap posts on roll cage and light bar to holes as shown on body. So it goes into there like that. So these go into here, right in the front, and then this comes over there and just locks in here. And this is another one of those. One time assembly job. Because like, you see the way the pins are, like, you're going to click that in. And that shouldn't come out again. <laughs> it's starting to ship up pretty quick. That's nice. I love this stuff. It's so awesome. Okay. Step four snap Cantley guns into notches and end the front body, as depicted in here. So these things are easy to get out. You just kind of like twist them a little bit. I know some people use like hobby knives and snips and stuff. You can. It's not impossible. They they made this, they made the area so thin that like kids can just bend it a few times, like you know, and you just, just snaps it off. It's like that. You can make you make it cleaner if you want to hit it with like a knife or a nail cut is not bad. All right, so these go in here and they rest thusly. Uh, this goes over like that. I think it's okay. So like here, okay. So these click in like that, and then there, locked in, and they spin. And then there's gears on these, as you can see. So when these touch, they'll lock into each other. And then when you... <laughs> Ready to F up some Cobras? Oh, God, that squeaks so bad. Uh, okay, what else we got? Step five. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, that broke my ear. Step five. Step post on roll cage machine guns into holes... And sh as shown, okay, so that's that hard to do. Take these off. Same thing again. You just pop these there, pop it there, pop it there. Well, that's extra tight. I spin it again. Okay, boom, that's done. Then we take these and just pop them in. Yeah these, can, yeah, these can come right back out. These aren't, like, locked in place permanently. Actually, I don't think they are. Did I just lock it in? No, no, they just kind of sit there. They, they peg in, but they don't go down all the way, because there's a stop there. 
So you guess you get a guy here, and they hold on to the edge. I, guess, I think. <laughs> no. Uh, there you go. That's cool. That's done. Uh, step six: insert seat belt. Is it seat belt? I don't remember seeing a seat belt. What is the seat belt? I didn't see any seat belt. Did you? Well, far from you. Where is there a seat belt? I have to look in the bag now. Oh, there's no seat belt. Well, that's a load of poopy. That's another thing. Yeah, see belt's not there. Huh. What do you have? I got this new in the box and uh, has burned chipped me. Or screwed me for lack of a better term. There's nothing in there. Um unless the seatbelt's just hanging out in the box. Oh, it's not in there. Well poop nuggets. That's not cool. I thought I heard something fall before, but I don't see nothing. Oh, there's no seatbelt. Huh. Well, that stinks. Yeah, those bags are from something else, not from here. What the nuts? That's not cool. Uh, bummer. Bummer. That's a bummer. Now I gotta go on eBay and look up a seatbelt for him? Ah, lame. Lame. But again, this is what happens. You buy stuff new in the box, you think you're getting everything, and usually you are. But if this left a factory in 1988, 89, and it wasn't included then, little Timmy would have gotten rather mad when he didn't have it, when he opened it up and put it together. And I don't see anything anywhere here. Nothing's in the bag, nothing's in the box. There's nothing floating around. There's nothing. So, that did not come with it. And that kind of stinks. But, you know, a lot of people don't like the seatbelts anyway. I don't mind them. Um, I'll have to look for a seatbelt on eBay now, which is unfortunate because I didn't want to have to <laughs> add pieces to this thing I already paid like 90 bucks for. Okay, so we got our torpedo missile thingies. These just plug into the side with the little dumbbell clips, like so many Joe vehicles do. There's a tent right there. Uh, same with this side. Okay, so that's all done. I'm going to take these sprues and get them out of here. And then, to the power of movie magic, we are going to snap our little fingerinos, and we're going to have some stickers on this. Ta-da! All decked out. Not a lot of stickers. It's like, you know, like eight, six, seven or so. Yeah, so it's a pretty good vehicle. Uh, <laughs> again, I have no idea where that seatbelt went. I, I, it's not a ticket. It's hard to miss. It's, it's black and everything. Um, you like the left tire well wheel. Well, let's put wind chill in this vehicle. Might as well do that. Let's flip around to get the blueprints. The actual blueprints, you think? So take uh, wind chill's little rifle away. Take away his little skis. Now, according to the blueprints, there is a place to store the skis. So, kudos to Hasbro for thinking of that. Look right there. Skis. Seatbelt, which is in here in the ski storage area. And there's a hole. So yeah, they slide right in there. So good for you, Hasbro. Or maybe you could have packed my seat belt in here. So we're gonna take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch the turns with wind chills. He would fly out and loses lose all his stuff. <clears throat> Not fitting there. Like I'm gonna stick his little gun in the in the hole where the seat belt should be. I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna put it in there. We're going to make the best of a bad situation, kids. 
He's going to hold on to his rifle because, you know, he's that type of fella. Let me just take the skis, put them like this, and then just go right in there. Supposedly. We'll see. See how fast these like slide out the bottom and like smash the bits when he's driving around. Are you gonna fall out? No, I think they kind of. Yeah, you might. I don't know. <laughs> That's ski storage. I'm like, okay, yeah, ski storage has grown. Oh, you ass. Damn you people. You fool trick me again. I think it's the only spot that can. Yeah, it's gotta be there. Can't go that way, so you gotta go this way. Unless they want you to do it this way. I'm going to go like that, maybe. Let's do one at a time. Put like this. There's a little slot here, so I'm thinking, like, if these things go in here and come out on this side. I guess. I don't know. Are they just rest there? Seems like it's... It's, it's just supposed to go there. Honestly, I'm thinking, like, you're going to hit one bump, and these things going to fly out, go underneath this vehicle, and they're going to snap in half. Okay, so like that. That looks like it makes sense. <clears throat> Can I put two there, though? <laughs> no, I cannot. Yeah. Oh, bro, you guys. Yeah, because otherwise it'll stick into the wheel well. I don't want that. that. That'd be a bad way to lose your cool machine gun skis. Now, like, as far as toys go, these things are great. Realistically, if you're trying to look at this from an actual combat standpoint, this stuff is ridiculous. I don't think it would actually hold up. I mean, for one, the guy's got no protection. He's got nothing to cover in his head. There's, only, uh, there's barely any steering controls. Um, so, yeah, Rachel's just going to chill out in there with his rifle because I don't, I don't have his seatbelt that it was missing. When somebody packed in the factory. No, but it's a cool vehicle. Um, so this is just, again, another way to show you guys how buying stuff new in box doesn't always guarantee it's going to be in great shape or of all the parts. But another reason why G.I. Joe is awesome is because it's very easy to find all the pieces on the internet. So if, if this came for some reason without these guns or without those things, you're easily able to find them online. Back in the day, you would have just called Hasbro up and you'd be like, oh, my mom bought me this. It's missing the parts. Sorry, guys. My bad. So, you have any figures we can put in there? I'll show you how it works with somebody else. I got anybody running around? I have somebody, let's see. Uh, there we go. I can have a grunt. You can use grunt. Version 2 grunt. Who's <laughs> getting the ever loving crap beat out of him? He's, he has seen some stuff. He's not having a good day. I'm not going to peg him in because I don't know if his peg holes will match these. Well, he fits fine. Okay, cool. I then just have him chill out here and hold on to that gun and be like, Bird. Bird. Yeah, there's no other place for people to sit. You could probably throw people back there if you really wanted to. I mean, there's room for the people to chill out. Nobody's pegged in. There's a nice engine details back there. And a little socket for some reason. I don't know why that's there. I don't know what's going on. Well, everything's fitting, so we're fine. So, let's look at the blueprints quick before we end the video. <clears throat> Thermal coolant pump for light temp lighting system, laser blast, high intensity triple housing lights, rear mounted airfoil personnel platforms, 2.67 coaxial firing double barreled machine guns. And a bunch of other crazy stuff, which I believe you can read it yourself, because it's a lot to read. This video is already 34 minutes long. So I'll pause it like that for a sec. You guys take a pause and check everything out. No, it's a, it's a cool vehicle. If you have the opportunity to acquire one, it is not a very large vehicle. Like for example, like I said, I paid about $90 for this thing new in the box, but that's the price you pay when you're buying things new. <clears throat> Although, you missed the seat belt that comes with us, bro. What the mother beep 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 beep. Okay, anyway, enough of the seat belts. Aside from that, <clears throat> um, the seatbelt would hold them in place a little bit, but the still seatbelts were a pain in the neck. A lot of people didn't like them because it clips in here, then it clipped in there. It was, <clears throat> you don't really need it. I mean, like, you're not going like, like, even then you could figure out, we put a rubber band in there, a paper clip, um, 
<clears throat> what do you call it? Like a, a twist tie. You can figure it out. It's not essential to get it. If you can find it on eBay cheap, or if I can, I would get the pieces. But if not, it's no big deal. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, Hasbro's G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, 1989, Arctic Blast with Windchill. Guest starring uh, version 2 Grunt, who is missing his hand. <laughs> yeah, so definitely go check this vehicle out. If you have the opportunity to get one up, I'd go pick it up. And I have another figure who will go well with Windchill, so Windchill will just hang out over there until that view happens. You too, mustaches rule.